the objective of this mission, which fits into NASA's overall heliophysics of science goals, is to understand how magnetic reconnection takes place. What are the physical processes involved that allow magnetic fields generated on the sun and generated on Earth to combine and exchange energy and particles and uh, really carry out a process that's typical throughout the universe. Uh, on Earth or in the vicinity of Earth, magnetic fields combine to share energy between the sun and the, and the Earth's magnetic field environment. Uh, magnetic fields in the tail. So on the day side, you get this exchange of energy that drives the processes inside the magnetosphere. In the tail, you have energy stored in the magnetic field and a long tail that when it collapses, energizes particles that become the aurora. Uh, but on the sun, the same sort of process goes on that releases energy in the form of solar flares and coronal mass ejections. It's a very common process where magnetic fields uh, have energy stored in them and become extended, very non-relaxed, and release that energy in the form or uh, in the form of particle energy and, and radiation. I had always been interested in how things worked. Um, uh, even from middle school, I uh, read a lot about science. I, I didn't know the word physics at the time. I didn't learn that until high school. Uh, but I'd always been interested in how things worked, wanting to get inside. It wasn't until uh, toward the end of college I actually started putting things back together again. Before then, I was just taking them apart. Uh, but um, I, I had had an interest in electronics and in computers and in science, which became physics, and uh, really space physics, what I ended up going to graduate school in, is an area where you can apply all of these things, all of these skills, to, to do the work. You need to be able to, under, if you're not building instruments, then you need to understand how they're built. You need to understand how they make their measurements, how they work, what their limitations are. Um, it isn't enough to understand the screwdriver how to, how to turn the screw, you need to understand what that screwdriver can do and, and how it does its job. And it's more complicated, a science instrument in space, but it's the same sort of thing. You need to understand how it works, what it can do, what it cannot do, because you're depending upon your knowledge of that instrument to interpret the things that it tells you to understand the environment that it's measuring. The measurements that you get, the sort of the, the real things that are returned to you from an instrument are counts or voltages. And you're not interested in so much in the actual number of particles that, that an instrument counts or the voltage that it might measure. You're interested in what that means about the environment that it's sampling. That number of counts means a certain density of plasma. The voltage may mean a certain magnetic field strength or electric field strength. And so you have to understand that. Get experience wherever you can get it. Um, you never know what you might get most excited about. Um, and you should seek whatever experience that you can get. They're all going to be good. Uh, it may be that you learn something in detail about the microbiology of a system, or you learn something in detail about the st structural engineering, or about materials, or about physical processes. It doesn't matter what you learn, it's all good. You'll, you'll use it all. And by sampling a lot of different areas, you're going to find something that, oh my God, you know, this is it. And that's what you should do.